Poll question. What do we have, Seton? What are we going to start with, hour one? Well, we could start with women's college basketball. Okay. Uh, we could say women's college basketball has had a moment or changed forever. Well, I look at this and I wonder, is it a moment or is it a movement? Right. Because the moment is Caitlin Clark. This year, the last two years has been Caitlin Clark. It's a moment. But how does the sport build upon that? Is it just based off Caitlin Clark? Is there Caitlin Clark's, you know, who will uh, follow? Just like Steph Curry. There have been players who are trying to emulate Steph Curry. The, you know, we're still not there yet if we ever get there. But with Caitlin Clark now leaving college basketball and going to the WNBA, does she bring the movement to the WNBA? And this would be a concern. I would love to see... Um, that we get to the moment, we get to the point that women are leaving early for the WNBA, but they're leaving because they can make as much, if not more, money. They should be, but that's not the case with NIL, these collectives. Caitlin Clark had all of these endorsements here. But I'm, I'm wondering, if somebody's going to break her record, then they have to stay four years to break her record. If somebody is averaging 30 a game... Are, they, are we going to get to the point where they go, I can make more money in the WNBA? That, that's really, I think, the key, what I'll watch with Caitlin Clark. Does the NBA grow, WNBA grow? Uh, because college basketball, you know, we have the same storylines. You have these players who were staying three years or four years. You have great coaches. You have great teams. You have great traditions. But is it a moment? Does this make the, the sport bigger? Does it make it better? Does it make it more lucrative? Those are things. And, and it's not fair to put that on her, but she is sort of the battering ram here if we're able to have that translate to the WNBA. Is it a moment or is it a movement? All right, what else do you have, Seton? Uh, yeah, it's because it's interesting. Some people get so big that they, and you know, she's kind of hit that, uh, Caitlin Clark has hit that point maybe where she's, she's just so gigantic that she is the whole movement. Yeah, she's Taylor Swift right yeah. now. As Holly Rose said to us last week, she's Taylor Swift. But I, I do think once guys start defending, like, hey, but she's not Pete Maravich. Like, now you know that she's hit a nerve. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, yeah. Like, dudes First would be like. First of all, Pete did it in three years, yes. okay? Yeah. So just. Yeah. And I, I've gotten, <laughs> I, I've heard the arguments. I've actually got into the arguments. And I said, look, I've, I was able to see Pete play. I appreciate Pete. Love Pete. Um, he took 42 shots per game. Caitlin Clark takes 22. Yes, Pete didn't have the three-point shot. If you said, I'll give Pete the three-point shot, but I'll give Caitlin 42 shots per game. Okay, then maybe you have a discussion there. But I do like that guys get a little protective there. And nobody loved Pete more than I did, but still, what Caitlin's doing is amazing. It's selling out places, going from city to city, and it's must-see TV. You know, the fact that Fox or ESPN, they're showing this. Yesterday afternoon, got Gus Johnson calling the game. You, know, you got Travis Scott there. Celebrities are there. Maya Moore came out to see her. Nolan Ryan came out to see her. I mean... This is a big deal. I just don't know if it's just a big deal now and then it's not a big deal. And who is the next? Who are the next players? Juju Watkins at USC. She shoots more than Caitlin Clark does, just barely. She's a freshman. Is she going to stay four years? Or is she going to say, there's no reason to go to the WNBA to make $250,000 where I can make a half million at USC? That's what, uh, that's what this moment is facing but like you know men's college basketball there's no temperature there I mean there's some good teams I think UConn's a wonderful team to watch they're not a traditional exciting team and you know with today's three-point shot and they're just they're a really good team but they you know do they have name recognition any stars you know any NBA first rounders maybe but they're they're just a really good team Purdue Zach Eady, okay. But, you know, tell me, tell me five really good basketball players for men. And if, and if you don't cover this sport, like there's nobody that's kind of 
stepping out and transcending the sport where you go, I got to watch that guy. We have that with Caitlin Clark. You've had that with UConn uh, women's basketball teams. Diana Taurasi is my favorite uh, bas- one of my favorite basketball players, and my favorite women's basketball player of all time. I just, I loved watching her play. And there is, I'm glad that we're getting eyeballs on the women's sport as well, because now you're seeing how they play, how they shoot. Um, you know, it, it's more of basketball. There's movement. Uh, by the way, Caitlin Clark's passing. She would be one of the greats of all time by just her passing. She's wonderful. And, you know, it's one of those where there's certain players that they're so creative, so good that their teammates can't keep up with it. Like they don't see what that person sees. And then sometimes you get hit in the head. You know? Maravich would always, they just never knew where it was coming from. But, you know, if Pete threw it to you, chances are you might not see it and get hit in the head. And Caitlin Clark, you know, to be a team player, um, I, you know, you have to be selfish to be that good a score. You just do. Every single night, you have to shoot at least 22 times. You have to get those shots. And But she also found time to be, you know, somebody who had a 1,000 assists in her career. But I do wonder where we go after this uh, with the sport, whether it's college or whether it's the WNBA. 